Hello everyone, I'm back with my channel History with Ishan and thank you so much for watching. Hope you all are taking care of yourselves during this pandemic. So now after a glamorous video on the Patiala necklace, I'm back with a much awaited video that is the story of Indian temples. So let's begin. There are three kinds of temple architectural styles found in Indian temples. The first one is the Nagara of Northern India that is associated with the land between the Himalayas and Vindhyas. The second is the Dravida of Southern India that is associated with the land between the Krishna and Kaveri rivers. And the third one is the Vesana that is a hybrid style of Nagara and Dravida that is associated with the land between the Vindhyas and the Kaveri. And Shilpa Shastras are the architectural texts written in early medieval times that mention these three styles. So we would be plunging into two temples that is Khajurao temples in MP and Brihadisura temple in uh, Tamil Nadu. So let's start with the first one Khajurao temples, Chhatarpur district, Madhya Pradesh. The name Khajurao is derived from its Sanskrit nomenclature Khajur Vahaka which is the confluence of two Sanskrit words Kharjur meaning date palm and Vahaka meaning bearer. There are about 25 temples spread over an area of approximately 6 square kilometer. The temples are grouped into three categories which are the western group of temples, the eastern group of temples and the southern group of temples. These temples are dedicated to several Hindu gods and goddesses along with deities in Jain beliefs. The temples of Khajurao of the Nagara style of architecture were commissioned by the Rajput rulers of Chandiya dynasty who ruled over central India from the 10th to the 13th century CE. The temples were built over a period of 100 years and it is believed that each Chandela ruler commissioned at least one temple in the complex during his lifetime. The temples were built about 57 km from the city of Mahoma, the capital of the Chandela dynasty rulers. Most of the present-day surviving temples were built during the reigns of King Yashavarman and Dhangadev. Historical accounts of Al-Biruni describe the temple complex of Khajurao from towards the end of 11th century when Mahmud of Ghazni attacked Kalinjar. The kings struck a deal with Mahmud by paying a ransom that prevented him from looting the temple. In 1830, the British surveyor T.S. Burt rediscovered the temples and efforts were made towards their excavation and restoration. Accounts of foreign travellers like Ibn Battuta and archaeologists like Alexander Cunningham presented the great artistic character of the temples to the world, making it one of the most visited tourist attractions in India. So now let's come down south to Brihadisvara temples in Tanjore, Tamil Nadu. Arul Mozi Varman Arul Mozi Varman, a Tamil emperor who was popular as Raja Raja Chora I, laid out foundations of Brihadisvara temple that is dedicated to Lord Shiva and is made of granite during 1002 CE. It was first among other great building projects by Tamil Chola, a symmetrical and axial geometry rules layout of this temple. It is one of architectural exemplar which showcases true form of Dravida kind of architecture in temples and is a representative of ideology of Chola Empire and Southern India's Tamil civilization. Brihadisvara temple testifies to Chola's brilliant achievements in architecture, painting, bronze casting and sculpture. From the epigraphical evidence, epigraphy is the study of inscriptions so epigraphical evidence means from the inscriptions. So from the inscriptions, it is known that Raja Raja Chola I started building this temple on his 19th year and completed it on 275th day of his 25th year. It took just 6 years to complete this work on 1010 AD. The inscriptions and frescoes on the walls of Brihadis were temples record the rise and fall of the city's fortunes. Shiva's representation is as a gigantic stone lingam. This is covered by a vimana that extends to 216 feet. It is built with stones that are bonded and notched without any mortar. The topmost stone, an engineering marvel, weighs about 80 tons, laying the foundation for the temple following the orders received in his dream and accomplishing it around 1080. He named the temple Raja Rajeshwaram. The huge bull statue, which is a Nandi bull, measures about 16 feet long and 13 feet high and is carved out of a single rock. 
The temple is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site known as the Great Level Chola Temples. So that was about two, one of the most great temples that represents different architectural styles. So we have seen how these architectural styles have been incorporated and have been reflected in these temples. How again the ancient Maharajas, the ancient kings were rich enough to commission the building of these temples and how an array of religious traditions and religious beliefs uh, prevail in this region and how the foreign travelers Al-Biruni, Ibn Battuta and various others have documented uh, about these temples and how the British archaeologists uh, like T.S. Burt and many more have surveyed and excavated and have restored the temple's premises. So that's it about these temples. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you have liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to know more about these temples, please uh, go through the reading links that are in the description box below. Share the video with your family and friends. Comment down below your views as well as subscribe to my channel History with Ishan to receive regular notifications from Indian and World History and also hit the bell icon for more updates. Stay tuned, stay safe, take care, goodbye, Jai Hind and stay well. Thank you.